throw a hammer at thing. Melee. Oh! 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 Rapid nature build. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Come on. Can I wait for Yellow Boss to go into his like little uh into his little Oh, never mind. Heal and just sit in this much damage. You know what I mean? Like, I have 1,000 per side. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh my god! Are you kidding me? Yo guys, what is up? Max and Owen lands video and today we're going over shock and awe. This is kind of an evolution of my Volt Viper build, which was a Stabamancer Berserker. This is Stabamancer Clawbringer, but we're actually spec more into the Clawbringer tree and are able to scale our hammer to do absolutely absurd damage. We do bossing, we do mobbing, and we've got great survivability. And this is a deathless build, which I absolutely love. And we're going to be focusing on the shock element. I hope you guys enjoy the build and the video. I will be covering everything you guys need to know. Let's get right into this. So we're going to go over the gear and then the skill tree and the hero points. And we're starting out with my class mod. Now, I am using a Deathless Mantle of the Lightfoot. I'll talk about Deathless first in a second, but the build is called Shock and Awe, and I want to explain why. So, we are using the skill Awe. I actually have a bad class mod. I would love to get plus three into this skill. I only have plus one, and Awe is genuinely one of the best skills in the entire game. Why is Awe so good? So, Awe reads, after dealing fire damage, the Fate Maker gains increased critical hit damage for a short duration. After dealing lightning damage, the Fate Maker gains increased critical hit chance for a short duration. And I'm dealing lightning damage all the time. This critical hit chance, what I'm at at 4 out of 3, I'd love to get a 6 out of 3. I'm at 44% critical hit chance. This is flat critical hit chance. This is the only skill in the entire game, only bonus, that is actual flat critical hit chance. If you've noticed, when you're making your character, your critical hit chance is usually pretty low. Um... That's because it's all multiplicative with each other. For example, Stabamancer's power is quote unquote 30%, but it's 30% of 5% of your base 5%. It's not 35% critical chance, which means that awe is incredibly powerful because this is a flat critical hit chance. And right now I've got about 26% critical hit chance on my gear, meaning with this, I'm at 70% critical hit chance basically at all times, meaning all of my damage is crit again. We're boosting our crit damage by playing the Stabomancer, and that's part of the reason we're able to deal so much damage is because we just have ridiculous crit damage. That is why we don't need to use our crit chance from the Shadows. From the Shadows really doesn't help us that much because we're already critting, and in From the Shadows, we're actually losing critical hit damage. So by specking Awe, we have a ton of critical hit chance and damage, and we don't really need to worry about from the shadows, and we can scale our hammer with some other damage increases, and that's kind of a big part of this build. So once again, if you can get a plus three into awe, you're going to be cooking with damage. Now, for the rest of my gear, I'm also using a Dragon's Harbinger. This is, whenever I activate my action skill, restore 50% of your ward over two seconds. This amulet, this is actually the first part of this build that I got. This amulet dropped for me, and I was like, wow, I need to make a Deathless Clawbringer build, because this is a very good roll. Um, activating an action skill restores 50% of your ward over two seconds. By going Deathless, we only have ward. And I'm throwing my hammer. Hammer, if you throw it and recall it immediately, is basically on a five-second cooldown. As you can see, I already have hammer back, and so I can constantly get my shield back I have 18,000 shield in Chaos Chambers with some modifiers. We've gotten over 30,000 shield, and we are very, very tanky because of that, because we're constantly throwing out our, am our hammer, hitting enemies, and that is a lot of our survivability. 
Then for my shield, I'm using the full battery shield with the enchant while health is below or, or health below 50%, regenerate maximum health per second. We don't care about that, but we do get plus 30% all damage dealt. This is the global multiplier for everything that we're dealing in one of the strongest enchants in the game because it's going to boost our hammer it's going to boost our dots it's going to boost our guns it boosts everything by 30 percent this is a very very strong bonus and we can only utilize it when we are deathless um and also the full battery shield causes lightning chains to all the enemies around us it's good it's going to give us amp shots and our shield is constantly going to be full because we're constantly using the harbinger meaning enemies are going to be taking lightning damage now for our melee weapon, and I'm going to go into a little bit longer discussion here about our melee weapon, but there's multiple options for melee. So the melee options for this build are the Spell Blade, which I'm using, and I'll explain it in a second. The Fate Breaker, which is going to give you absurd survivability because melee attacks heal your ward or your shield for 100% of the damage dealt. The Wailing Banshee, because it's great for mobbing, and it will chain... Uh, Wailing Banshee procs to enemies, and we also have the Storm Surge, which will call down Lightning Bolts. Now, these are all amazing options. The Storm Surge, the Wailing Banshee, and the Fate Breaker, they all have their pros and cons. What none of them do, though, is change the way that our Hammer Throw works, and that is why we're using the Spell Blade. The Spell Blade reads, melee attacks deal spell damage instead of melee damage. Melee attacks increase spell critical chance by 80% for 6 seconds. This says melee attacks deal spell damage instead of melee damage. That's a flat up lie. That's not how this thing works. How the spell blade actually works is it's going to scale your melee attacks off of both melee and spell damage. You're basically adding spell scaling to your melee attacks, meaning we now have two ways to scale our damage instead of one. And this applies to our hammer throw. Our hammer throw, now it says lightning melee damage and lightning area ability damage but it actually will get more damage the more damage we put into our spells which is incredible because the buff meister has a thing on it called zap zap is going to give us 80 percent increased spell damage and bonk is going to give us 80 percent melee damage meaning i activate my buff meister and now my hammer is getting both of those bonuses in addition to all of our other damage increases and our hammer is a melee attack still and our melee critical hits or we're guaranteed melee critical hits after i kill an enemy which will critical hit which will cause status effects and guaranteed status effects from alchemic agent um the way that this build works is we have crazy high crit chance and crit damage we're running around our our hammer hits things for like a truck and if they don't die from our hammer, we've got a spell blade to finish them off, which also has echo on it to follow up all of the damage. Um, we're chaining constant lightning damage because we are using a live wire. The live wire, whenever you melee, causes lightning chains. Now, these chains scale off of the damage that triggers them. And when I'm hitting ridiculous damage with our spell blade with echo, the chains of the live wire are hitting hundreds of thousands of damage as gun damage to nearby enemies. Uh, it's just so, so gross. Um, just to wrap up the rest of the gear, because I could ramble on about all these synergies here for a while, I'm using a melee damage ring while ward is full. Effects are increased by 100%, and a melee damage purple ring with a bunch of melee critical hit damage. Once again, we want melee critical chance, melee damage, melee stuff. Um, the reason we're not using spell stuff is because while spells are great, uh, I mean, technically you could use melee stuff as well, but we, we do not benefit from spell crit and spell crit chance. We're only benefiting from melee crit chance and melee damage or melee crit chance for the actual hammer. So that's why I'm prioritizing melee rolls as opposed to spell rolls, but you could get away with both. If that was a little bit difficult to follow along with my gear, on screen right now is a picture of all of the gear that I'm wearing lined up. And real quick, I originally was spec'd full melee enchants. I had action skill start melee, spell cast melee, everything was melee. That just didn't work out that well for my damage. I found getting a mix of elemental damage increases, melee damage increases, and lightning damage increases were the best for me and led to the most one shots and the fastest boss kills. So I'm using action skill active, increase elemental damage by 35%. 
on action skill start increase melee damage by 40 percent when health is below regenerate maximum health which you don't care about but gain 30 percent damage dubs and while action skill is active increase lightning damage by 50 percent and once again the action skill active enchants are currently lasting for flat 60 seconds i'm throwing my hammer about every five seconds so those are constantly up all the time and now we're on to the skill tree so we're starting out in the clawbringer tree with oath of fire fate makers gun damage deals bonus fire damage now if you remembered from my vault viper build video the chains of the live wire actually count as gun damage and when I'm meleeing, the chains will get this bonus fire damage, which is insane because once again, um, we're scaling a lot of our damage off of multiple dots and having multiple dots and fire and lightning happen instantaneously whenever I pull the trigger of my weapon or whenever I melee something is amazing. Next up, Dragon Aura. This is once again, a really strong skill. It's going to boost my elemental damage of everything that I'm doing, uh, all of our melee. Everything is getting boosted by this. Next up, we've got Radiance. The Fate Maker gains increased ward capacity. Now, you could put these points into Dedication. Dedication is going to give us action skill cooldown rate. But if you hadn't seen, uh, my action skill cooldown, when I just chuck my hammer and bring it back, is already very good. Um, so I didn't feel like I needed that because my action skill cooldown is already really, really good. Uh, if you want that, you can, but I found more survivability out of the ward capacity. And then we've got Oath of Thunder, Fate Maker's melee damage, and his wyvern deal bonus lightning damage. We are scaling a lot of our damage off of lightning, and getting even more bonus lightning damage is great. Next, uh, we've got Blasphemous Favor. This is just a cool skill. Uh, sends lightning orbs and lightning ability damage everywhere. It looks really cool. Not great damage, but it, it is cool to see. Um, then we've got Storm Breath. Once again, looks cool. We get a little bit more damage reduction. If you wanted to take these points, if you're like really min-maxing, uh, you could put them both into maximum ward capacity. But I just think that they look so awesome and it helps me live out that like thunder, lightning fantasy. And then we've got awe, which is one of the biggest reasons that we're going this far into the skill tree. One of the best skills in the game, giving us flat critical hit chance and a big critical hit damage multiplier that is up at all times. Next up, we've got the Stabmancer tree. Now, there are actually a bazillion ways that you can spec this tree. I'm gonna give you a suggestion for what I spec. Um, one of the things that hurt me is I didn't spec points into Arsenal. This is gonna give us melee damage and spell damage, which both factor in to our damage of everything that we're dealing. So this is a great pickup. The reason I didn't go this is because I like flashy kills and sometimes my hammer wouldn't one shot things but the dots would and if i was inspecting to potent poisons the dots didn't last long enough to one shot it so just being flashy uh i really like potent poisons because my status effect duration is going to last 32 seconds longer or sorry 32 percent uh longer which is really nice for those flashy kills haste is super nice because melee attack speed and movement speed is going to be increased and a lot of our damage when we're doing those raid bosses is hitting them as quickly as we can and so getting that double uh melee attack speed and movement speed is really nice follow-up is busted uh in the volt viper build i broke down how follow-up you actually get this once again our live wire chains gun damage and that gun damage is going to feed into follow-up constantly giving us melee attack damage when you saw me shooting at the bosses in this video with my live wire, that was mainly to proc follow-up, which um, is going to give me that increased melee damage for my hammer. Exploit their weaknesses. This is a cracked skill. Uh, it's going to give me 6% damage increase per unique status effect. This stacks up to 5, but it can all be from the same thing. So, like, for example, if you just shot a cryo liquid cooling at one enemy, you could actually get full exploit their weakness without any other damage sources. But with us, we're getting a ton of different damage sources we don't really need to worry about that just a fun fact if you didn't know then we've got nimble fingers whenever we deal melee damage we get fire rate and spell damage the spell damage is once again going to directly feed into the damage of our attacks because we're scaling our melee attacks and our hammer off of spell damage as well then we've got shadow step this skill is super important um critical hits give us so much more damage we've got a ton of crit damage and being able to hit them constantly on every enemy because you chain and then you chain and then you chain you're just critting everything guaranteed with this which is really nice um and if we're not we have amazing crit chance contagion just helps us spread up exploit their weaknesses i really like this skill if you wanted you could put three points into sneak attack for a little bit more crit damage uh once again there's so many ways that you could spec this tree and then alchemic agent melee critical hits apply a random status effect which we are 
doing a ton of critical hits and our hammer can actually proc alchemic agent so when we throw our hammer and it crits it procs the status effect from the hammer but it also can proc status effects um from alchemic agent which is just gross and that's what leads to some of these crazy crazy boss mounts with or kills just chucking my hammer and then something dies um and yeah guys that is it for this skill tree now let's do hero points so for my hero points and class power i currently have uh 55 clawbringer power which is going to give me a 55 percent damage increase to my hammer chucks which is awesome we're full specking into critical hit damage none into crit chance just because once again our crit chance is actually really good just from awe um we're going fully into status effect damage and the rest we're putting into max hp and ward because we're deathless uh the more shield that we have the more survivability that we have and enemies genuinely have a really hard time getting through our stuff guys that is going to do it for the video um huge shout out to epic ng uh dude with a blunt and poftus for all the help with this build i will have a link uh to epic's channel down in the description hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will catch y'all in the next one guys take care peace I was